but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's be seated, brothers and sisters. We are now on the 20th Sunday of the Ordinary Time. A banquet or feast or celebration without food is not complete. Food is used in all three readings today as an image of God's favor and presence with His people. In both the first reading and the gospel, the joys of salvation, when one is saved, there is so much joy. And this joy is compared to a banquet of rich foods, of choice wines, and a place at the table with our heavenly host or divine hosts. So the joy of being saved is similar to that celebration of a feast or a banquet. And you are seated beside the one who invited us to life. The imagery is very beautiful. The imagery of unending feasts. It's not just one day, one hour, one week feasts. It is unending, continuous feasts with juicy, rich food and pure choice wines. Very powerful imagery. It will capture our imagination. Not only about the joy of being saved, but where life should be. Especially those who have gone ahead of us, who are called back to the home with God. We can imagine how beautiful is being with God in heaven. It is not a lonely place. It's like, like a cemetery where there's no life. Heaven is equated and compared with a banquet, an ending banquet. Lots of food. So the eternal heavenly banquet will be that much and much more beyond what we can imagine. But if you can imagine what is a banquet, People laughing, people enjoying the food, the company, the music, dancing. Well, you can multiply it to a thousand times when you imagine heaven. It is interesting how often meals are used as a sign of celebration. In our own culture, we have feasts for holidays. Like when we have Christmas, Easter, birthday, anniversaries, fiesta in the barrios in the provinces. So these are all special celebrations. And this, there are, these are the times of sharing a meal, especially juicy, rich food, and special drink. It's a way of being united, of being one with others, celebrating our friendship. And each celebration should be just a small reminder. Any celebration here on earth, be it a birthday party, like a buffet with a fiesta at home, are just a small reminder of the great feasts that awaits us in heaven with God our Father with God with our brothers and sisters it is a banquet feasts which surpasses all other celebrations to this feast mentioned in the readings today people of all nations have been invited this feast will be a time to celebrate 
the splendor of our God. The gospel informs us that some people who have been invited either refuse to come or do not come in the way in which they are expected to come. In the first reading, Isaiah describes a banquet with juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. It is not the ordinary meal or even a special dinner. This is a feast beyond all feasts. It might be described as the biggest buffet. Buff, buffet. Eat all you can. This is truly a mountainous celebration. Not just because it, is, it takes place on God's holy mountain, but because the food and drink supplied are from a mountainous and endless supply. At this mountainous celebration are people from all lands and nations. This is an international festival. Have you seen in your barrio fiesta that some people, relatives brought in friends like foreigners? I remember in our fiesta in, in, in Leyte, some of my cousins brought in students who are studying English, especially the Koreans. And we shared to them our meal, our celebration, and a party at night in the barrio. And they were so delighted. They were so happy. Lots of food, lots of drink, lots of swimming in the sea afterwards. So the, read, the first reading talks about this mountainous festival, international celebration. There is no sorrow, no tears, no disappointment present here. This is a time of total rejoicing. And the feast is being brought to you by our God. The responsorial psalm taken from Psalm 23 also presents us with a celebration where the Lord has spread a table before us and where the cup overflows. Imagine he spreads the table before us. The cup overflows. The cup of wine overflows. Very similar to the imagery of Isaiah. Actually, this is a victory feast of our God. Celebrating that the enemy of God has been placed in subjection and defeated. So there is no reason to fear or to lament or to be discouraged, or to be disappointed, or to be depressed. The psalm tells us to rejoice. In the second letter, St. Paul expresses his thanks to the community who has provided him during his imprisonment. Paul declares that he knows what it means to be hungry and also to be well provided. And he is grateful that the people of Philippi have tended to his needs during his times of difficulty. In the gospel, Jesus shares a parable about a royal wedding. The kingdom of God or heaven or life of God is compared to a royal wedding banquet. And many were, have been invited so the king sent his royal servants to remind the people of the invitation sent way ahead of time. So he reminded them, it's time already. Prepare yourselves. Everything is ready. You just have to come. And many may have many alibis and excuses and they even killed some of the servants of the king so the king at the end got furious and reprimanded not only reprimanded castigated them punished them since they will not come those who were invited the king sent his servants 
to the streets and find anyone, bring them in. Anyone, good or bad, old or young, men or women. So the hall must be filled with people. There will be a celebration. Towards the end of the story, we see the king coming into the feast himself. But then he found some people not wearing the wedding banquet garments, the wedding garments. So he got furious again and told his servants to throw them away of the house. You are not wearing the proper garment. Send them out. What lessons can we learn from the readings today? The difference with the first reading and the gospel reading is that there was an invitation sent. People were invited, but they refused. They make alibis, they make excuses. And then the host also expected for the guest to wear the proper garment, the wedding garment. That's the difference with the first reading. So to enjoy the feast, first, one must have an invitation. If you are not invited, you cannot come. So for you to enjoy the feast, you must be invited. But we know that in the first reading, the invitation was open to all nations all races the word church derived from the greek is ecclesia and you know the meaning of ecclesia it means those having been called or invited so that is the church the church are people who have been invited ecclesia is the church whose people have been invited and if we belong to the church we are invited we have been invited we are the ones who would respond to the invitation of Jesus the first lesson taught by the parable is that God invites everyone but each of us needs to give God's invitation priority over other good and important thing in life. In the gospel, the invited guests did not come to the banquet. They have many alibis. I have to go to the farm. I have business to tend to. I am busy. No? I forgot to do some errands. So they take the invitation of God for granted. The second lesson for all of us is that it is not enough for us just to show up with the invitation. We must be properly dressed up. So mere acceptance of the invitation does not guarantee participation in the banquet. Guests at a wedding banquet would be expected to appear in clean and neat clothing. There's a story of this Russian head of state who gave an elaborate banquet to honor the British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. The Russians arrived in their best formal wear, military dress uniforms, but their honored guests did not. Churchill arrived wearing his famous zipper coverall it's like the uniform of a repairman, of a maintenance man. Overall, no? it's called coveralls that he had worn during the German bomb attack in London. He thought it would provide a nostalgic touch. The Russians would appreciate it. But actually, the Russians did not appreciate what Churchill did. They were humiliated. They felt insulted that their prominent guest of honor, prominent, no? highest, 
VIP was not wearing the proper dress. They were wearing their best uniform. And so they were, they felt insulted. Wearing the right clothing to our formal dinner honors the host. So it's not just us why we want to wear the gala, the best gala dress. No? It's not just for our sake. We look good in our appearance. But when you are dressed properly, you are honoring the hosts. And also the occasion. We honor the occasion. So rejecting to wear the right clothing is an insult. Weddings were such an important occasion in Palestine in Christ's days that people were expected to wear the proper clothing to show appreciation and respect for the invitation. In fact, the clothing was provided by the host himself because he knows some of the guests are poor or some are so busy they have no time to buy clothes in order to wear on that wedding day. So, in today's gospel, Jesus demands that, that the guest will wear the wedding garment that has been provided for them by the hosts. So, people just entered, didn't have manners at all, not wearing the right garment is an insult to the hosts. What is the meaning of wearing the wedding garment? It means living out the gospel message. We are called to live the moral and ethical values of Jesus. The wedding garment in the parable refers to the true discipleship rather than an uncommitted membership. The parable means that when one freely accepts Christ as one's Lord and Savior, one must conform oneself to the values of Christ. In other words, the Christian must be clothed in the spirit and teaching of Jesus. The Christian must be clothed in a new purity and a new holiness. In his letter to the Colossians, St. Paul tells the people, his converts, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, with kindness, with humility, with meekness and patience. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. So, the wedding garment is not actually material dress. It has been provided by God who invited us to this banquet. And this wedding garment is, being, is becoming like Christ when we live out His gospel values. And especially the more specific ones are the virtues of Jesus mentioned by St. Paul to the Colossians. Compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, and together, bind with love. So, that is the wedding garment. We don't have to invent. We don't have to look for this nice kind of material clothing. This is a gift of the Lord for us. He gives us an invitation. He provides us the garment. It's only for us to accept the invitation and to wear them when we come to His banquet. Sunday is the day of the Lord. It is the day set aside to assembly with others and celebrate the goodness of the Lord God. But the, the bad thing in our times today, and I felt so sad, I felt so disappointed, is that Sunday right now 
is being seen by many as just one of the work days. So, there's no difference with Sunday and, and the rest of the week. For them, you still have to work on Sunday to earn a living, to feed your families. So, it is not anymore a special day for the Lord. So Sunday today in our culture has become more and more unimportant. It's, it's disappearing in many families. We do not take it as a time to come, to come together as family with friends and celebrate a day of rest and recreation. There was a time before, if you are, if you are 30s, 30 years old and above, there was a time of, that people will call you to a party and they call it, come as you are parties <laughs> come as you are so when they you receive when you receive a phone call and whatever you are wearing at the time so you are, you are invited to come to a party just come whatever you are wearing whether you are wearing a pajama or in your work clothes tending the farm or coveralls or exercise shorts basketball shorts Whatever you're wearing at the time, just go to the party. Come as you are, parties. Maybe you aren't familiar with this, no? no? But then, right now, being party, people do not really wear exotic clothes. They just come with, sometimes, uh, yung mga sira, sirang jeans, naka shorts lang. So, you don't care anymore. So that's what a party is to them. They come with their casual attire. And then, the problem is, they also bring this to Sunday, Eucharist celebration. They think that Sunday is just like a come-by-yourself parties. No big difference. So, Sunday is losing its specialness. Huh? I feel so sad that we're not giving the best, not the best clothing, not, not so much of the appearance, but especially our heart, the interior clothing. But then, the invitation remains the same. Come to the banquet. I have prepared rich food, fresh wines. Come and wear your wedding garments. The Lord's Day, its week, should be a sign of the glorious things to come. It should be a time when we experience the goodness and kindness of our Lord. Saint Paul would say and pray to our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen.